hello everyone. Um, as uh, Philip uh, said, I'm working at the technology management department of EKZ. Uh, and I would like to take uh, the next few minutes uh, to show you some data analytics and machine learning applications that uh, are uh, relevant for us uh, to give you an insight about such applications from the perspective of an energy provided provider and distribution system operator. Uh, for the ones who don't, don't know EKZ, we are one of the largest energy suppliers in Switzerland. Uh, we provide about 9% of uh, 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 Swiss electricity demand. Uh, our grid is um, covering uh, the most part of uh, the canton of Zurich, um, which is also our core business. But apart from that, we have many um, activities in the uh, free market, such as renewable energies, battery energy systems, uh, energy management systems for prosumers, uh, submetering, and many more. Uh, so. Uh, my first um, application, uh, machine learning application that I want to show you is about uh, the distribution grid. Um, one of our most important ma mandates is to um, uh, manage the grid and to plan the grid of the future. Uh, so uh, here on the right, you can see the situation in the low uh, voltage grid today. Uh, so you can see a lot of red question marks uh, because uh, we don't have many information, dynamic information, live information about it. We have limited load profile data because our smart meter rollout is still ongoing and we have still some issues with communication. Um, we don't have permanent uh, load measurements of transformers and distribution cabins. Uh, we only have periodical measurements of them. We don't have any measurements of the load flow uh, through the uh, underground cables uh, and thus no information. So the grid planning we do and we did in the past is based on worst case, um, unreal, worst, worst case scenarios and on static rules, who, which in many cases can be unrealistic. Uh, but um, this has been working fine um, until now. But uh, it's not enough for the future because the game is changing. We have more and more PV uh, in the system. We have more and more electric cars, batteries, heat pumps, and so on. So in order to, so the, the flows become much more complicated and we really need to do uh, load flow simulations in, in order to efficiently plan the grid in the future. Um, and this is uh, why, but we don't have, um, enough data, we miss the load profiles in the gray points that you can see. And this is exactly what we um, do to uh, fill in these gaps. We uh, generate synthetic load profiles uh, using machine learning techniques. And uh, this uh, helps us uh, fill in all the gaps and perform the load flow simulations that are going to help us optimize the investment costs for grid expansion and grid reliability. Uh, and we can also find out what is the minimum monitoring equipment needed uh, in order to have a clear view of the grid. Uh, in other words, it can help us optimize the investment and run costs for grid monitoring. Um, for this application, we use smart meter data and another application for smart meter data uh, is load disaggregation. And by load disaggregation, I mean uh, the breakdown of the energy consumption to the different appliances or the different uses of energy. So you can see on the right, um, you, have, you can have um, a breakdown of your energy consumption into heating, uh, cooling, washing, and so on. Um, this is very important for us because it increases the understanding of the customer regarding the energy consumption so he can better manage uh, the energy consumption. It also um, allow us, allows us to uh, recommend energy saving tips that will boost energy efficiency. We can also measure energy saving campaigns and we can enhance our own uh, data grid data quality. I can give you an example. Uh, in 2018, uh, there were 
less than 300 charging stations registered to us, um, electric uh, car charging stations, but in the canton there are about 3,000 more electric cars. So this way we can, we can find out, we can really increase the quality of our data. Um, another classical, very classic machine learning application is forecasting. And in our case, uh, we use, uh, we do load forecasting and you, we use this uh, in model predictive control algorithms in order to um, control integrated energy systems. So on the left, you can see um, a modern energy system with photovoltaics, uh, battery storage. It can have also other heat storage capacities, um, energy consumption and the grid. And in the middle is the brain, is the controller who controls the capacity, the storage capacities accordingly in order either to increase the self-consumption or to perform peak shaving. And this brain needs the load forecasting in order to be able to, to manage these uh, resources. So you can see an example on the right, you can see uh, three different machine learning techniques and how they perform. Uh, with time from now moving to the future. And this is the mean absolute percentage error. Um, another uh, forecasting uh, technique that we use uh, is used for um, estimating the battery aging of our battery systems. We are very happy to be uh, one of the pioneers in Europe regarding uh, battery systems. We built the first battery the first one megawatt battery uh, in Switzerland in 2012. And in 2018, we built a bigger battery, uh, 18 megawatt battery. Um, both of them are uh, providing frequency regulation uh, services to the grid. And this, this one on the picture is the first one, the one megawatt battery in Dittikon. Um, this battery, the, these systems generate a lot of data, as you can imagine. So. We have a lot of measured values for more than five years, uh, measurements of voltage, temperature, current, state of charge, and all these measurements were done on the cell level. So we had a lot of data, and the first question you want to ask if you have a battery system is, how long is my battery going to last? How long can I use this battery um, in the future? And this uh, question was asked, was uh, answered by ABB Corporate Research, uh, who did an analysis and estimated uh, the state of health uh, of the battery. Here you can see um, the estimation based on the real data until 2018, and then um, with a simple regression, you can you can estimate uh, the remaining lifetime in the future. So in 2018, it was estimated that if we have a limit of 80% remaining capacity, uh, it will last for a year. If we allow 70% remaining capacity, it will last for four years. Um, so this was just a brief overview uh, of some of our um, activities in this area to give you an insight about how can uh, a company like us, a utility company, use uh, machine learning and data analytics. Uh, but this is not the end for sure. Uh, our data volumes are growing, as are the data volumes for every other industry. Uh, already today, we have certain applications uh, that are helping us, uh, as, I, as I said, as I mentioned before. And there are yet many more to come, to come because there are still uh, huge amounts of data that are waiting to be analyzed and the new data that are being generated every day are still waiting to be analyzed. So the future uh, is for sure really interesting for us in this field. Yeah. Thank you very much.